Welcome to Monmouth in Focus, a program about the services and functions of Monmouth County government. I'm Commissioner Director Tom Arnone, your host for this segment of Monmouth in Focus. Today, I'm extremely excited to be here on the great beach of Long Branch, here with Mayor John Pallone. How are you? Good, Commissioner. Good Always you. good to see you, my friend. What a great place. And, Thank you um, for being here. We switched this, and we actually did a few segments last month, and we did it in Belmar. Now we came on this side of the county. And uh, listen, we're sitting. This is like a destination. Why people in Monmouth County would ever think of going away when you turn around and you look at this here, it's absolutely gorgeous. Um, but it takes a lot. It takes a lot for you, your administration. Um, you guys have great beaches, surfing, shopping, so many wonderful things. But what does it take? Like, you know, I'm sure this could go on for an hour, but what does it take for you to get at least everything in place to start and kick off the season and keep it as vibrant as it is? You know, Commissioner, it's become almost a year-round operation. So uh, the season extends beyond Labor Day, as you know, to the middle of September. Everything has to come off the beach. And end of September, we start recruiting with the specials for the police on the boardwalk and so forth. January and February, we start recruiting lifeguards. You know, we have um, four miles of beach here on Long Branch, 21 public guarded beaches. Uh, 400 uh, off, you know, total between the lifeguards and the beach staff, total of about 400 people. So it's, it's amazing. Uh, it's it's such process. an operation that you have to deal with. But everybody looks at a destination, which Long Branch has obviously become such a great destination. But you know, and everybody thinks it's all about the beaches. Fortunately enough, we haven't had rain this year, so most of it is about just the beaches. But in, in a normal tradition, there is days, off days, and on days. Um, what other services, what other off things that you have to offer to the residents of, of here in Monmouth County? And quite frankly, all, the state of New Jersey, because you see so many other state license plates here too. Yeah, well, I mean, certainly the beach is the biggest draw, but as you know, you run the boardwalk. We have two miles of boardwalk here. We have a, one of the few communities that have literally a, a, uh, a carousel that's hand painted and hand crafted. It's absolutely beautiful. We're in front of the Ocean Place Resort here. We have a couple of resorts right on the ocean front. And you know, probably you know, beside the beach, we have, um, you know, Long Branch is a very diverse community. So we have a lot of business districts and the uh, offerings for shopping and dining is, is uh, you know, there's so many options there. Um, you know, we're the home of, uh, Max's yes, hot yes. dogs, as well as the original windmill. Uh, so you could come to Long Branch, you can get a slice of pizza, or you could go to one of the uh, our state-recognized steakhouses. As you know so as well. what I what I really marvel about what you you've done here is you've created um, a destination, but you've also created um, you really really the the housing that's going up here is absolutely gorgeous. So um, people are now coming here to make this their permanent um living conditions and and that's only because of what you created so you've tried to improve so many of not just the services here um which you've done a phenomenal job but you know sometimes it gets missed of some of the stuff outside or you know outside the beachfront what you've done there and the services you improved can you touch a little bit about that yeah well let me mention first that we have like 20 parks in the city of lawn branch and a lot of people aren't you know aware of those parks so yeah let me just give you two examples just two blocks away we have jackson woods which is a 12 acre yes. wooded trail that's like a jewel here that a lot of people don't know about and then we have some manahasset park which is a very active park that has every field that you could you know, possibly imagine. But, um, you know, we're very lucky uh, in the last four years since I've been the mayor, we now have a, a arts and a, a arts and cultural center here in the city. We have a brand new community pool. We've upgraded most of the playgrounds and the parks in the city. And uh, summer wise, we have just all kinds of events, three concerts a year in the summer, but that extends throughout the year with holiday events and seasonal events, fall, spring. You created uh, a year round environment here. Um, obviously everybody focuses on the summer because we're in summer. You turn around, look to see what we're looking at. Um, people walking, people running, people enjoying all the things that you have to offer. But you know, um, the biggest thing that Long Branch has really created is a small business environment. You know, you don't, you know, I, of course the big chains are important. They're very important, but the small time environment here that you've created for the businesses and the support to the businesses. And I know what you've done, 
here, even during um, our the COVID situation and timeline, you've done wonders with them. We've tried to assist them too, the county with the small businesses. But you know, how do you work and try to always keep them involved and in making sure that they stay vibrant because they're the backbone. They really are. And we have, uh, I mean, we're fortunate that we have a full-time staff and Office of Community and Economic Development. We have our Shop Long Branch program, which... Uh, which That's a big uh, one. Which is a big one. We have, we're an urban enterprise zone. Um, so, you know, merchants can get... Uh, uh, That's huge. Right. And, and uh, we're very, we partner with our Chamber of Commerce quite a bit too. You know, well, we have touch it. You have one of the biggest ones. Chamber of Commerce, right. Municipal Chamber right, of Commerce. Right. And you know, Ocean Fest is a good example where that's a partnership with the Chamber and uh, that's a big event here. Well, you know, um, I, I guess I guess the biggest thing is that, and you touched that because that was going to be my next question to you. Some of the events that you host during the course of your, obviously Ocean Fest was, was unbelievable. I was down here and it was, it was run so well. And more importantly, it just was, it was extremely successful. Obviously, a lot is dictated on the um, on the weather, which had a great day um, there. But are some? Do you have some other events that go on during the course of the summer? A lot of events. We have the Jazz and Blues Festival. We have um, a West End um, Cruise Night, where we generally bring in a national act. Wow. Uh, we have art in the park. As I mentioned to you, we have you know during the summer we have three concerts every week taking place. Uh, so yeah, we have a, we have a lot lot of events going on uh, almost every day. I use it last s Sunday, for example. We had the Long Branch Ocean Mile swim in the morning. We had a West End Neighborhood Fun Bay at, at, in the park, and at night we had a concert on the beach. So we have a and lot the thing that on. I commend you for and credit you for is um, and and I don't even know this for a fact because I wasn't here, but I'm pretty sure you were at all three. And um, there, because you, it seems like you attend and, you know, it's not like you're in a little barrow um, being a mayor, which, you know, and I formerly come from, um, which was hard in its own way to make sure that you were so involved in everything. But to be the mayor of the city um, here of Long Branch, um, you know, you've got, I'm sure you have your challenges. We all do. Same thing on the county, but um, you would never know it by the way things are run. And that's really the perception of what people like to see. And um, you've done a great job. You've done a phenomenal job, you and your council and your administration, because we all rely. And, you know, special thanks to your police officers and your public safety and all those areas. Um, they do a great job. They work along with all of our people. We've become partners. Too. And that's what we've created here. Where can we find any information? Where the public can find any information if they want to know um, any information going on? In we had, you know, we have a very good website that's interactive. We're on all the social media platforms. There's a mayor page, Instagram. Great. Uh, Great. You know, yeah, so same thing that we all yeah, do. We're there. Um, unfortunately, I'm not as good as it as, as all these young um, same, same here, <laughs> Commissioner. So I look forward to seeing you. I look forward to working for you. Um, I want to thank you, Mayor. You know, I, I can't commend you enough for what you've done here in Long Branch and, um, and, and trying, always trying to make the quality of life better for the residents of Long Branch. And that's commendable to you and your, your group there. Thank you, Commissioner, for thank all you. you do as well. That's all the time we have for this episode of Mammoth in Focus. Um, see you next time. And I'm uh, looking forward to continuing these great episodes here at the Great Jersey Shore. Thank you. Registered voters also have the option to vote by mail. And for the first time in state history, registered voters throughout New Jersey can take advantage of in-person early voting at designated polling locations in the days leading up to election day. That means more ways to vote and more days to vote in person. There's plenty to do and pick in Monmouth County. Find your own apples, pumpkins, blueberries, and more, and see why what's grown in Monmouth is the best around. Learn more at tourism.visitmonmouth.com. You don't have to travel far to get away. Monmouth County, New Jersey is a four season destination. Whether you want fun in the sun, or winter adventures, our doors are open. All year long, you can find nightlife, amusements, amazing food, beaches, and one of the best park systems in the country. There's something for everyone, every day of the year. Make the vacation you want in Monmouth County, New Jersey. Want a career in media? Covering everything from television and video production to public relations and journalism. 
the communications media department at Brookdale prepares students for careers in all fields of media. Students can either go on from Brookdale to a four-year college of their choice, or they can apply what they have learned to a job in the field. To learn more, connect with us at brookdalecc.edu or 732-224-2020. Welcome to Monmouth in Focus, a program about the services and functions of Monmouth County government. I'm Commissioner Director Tom Arnone, your host for this segment of Monmouth in Focus. Today I am joined by my partner and colleague, Commissioner Nick DiRocco, who serves as a liaison to the Monmouth County Fire Academy and also the liaison to finance here in Monmouth County. Welcome, Nick. Thank you, Director. Oh, great to great be here. here. So what do you think about changing the venue from them? little offices, secluded offices about here in this beautiful yeah, weather. You can't beat summer in Monmouth County, summer in Long Branch, you can't beat that view. So thanks for having me, it's great. Oh, this is great. So listen, we all know that um, our fire academy and our emergency services are very, very exceptionally well run, um, an essential part of what the county is. Um, and I know um, the viewers probably don't know all about what goes into the fire academy. Um, what are the requirements to get accepted into the academy? Well, it's a great question, and first of all, as you know, I know you and I share this, uh, the, our, our, our respect and, and really love for first responders in our county. They do a tremendous job, especially, you know, our fire service, 7,000 of whom are volunteers in Monmouth County. That's these are, big. These are people who are, you know, putting their own safety and security at risk to help others, and it's, it's, uh, it's a tremendous uh, asset to the county. The Fire Academy does a great job of training our firefighters, uh, both new recruits who are coming into the fire service and mid-career uh, firefighters who are looking to expand upon their knowledge, keep up with the modern trends, and to have you know the most modern tools and resources and training that they can have. What are some of the courses like they take there? So every firefighter needs to go through both a Firefighter 1 and Firefighter 2 course. That's uh, interesting. About 250 hours combined of training. And uh, we have about 7,000 people come through that facility every year in terms of whether it's new, new recruits or uh, folks in the middle of their, of their career. Wow, and I know that um, every class we have a certain amount of, of firefighters, both male and female, come in there. And um, like how many usually is the traditional class size? So it varies, it's typically between 30 and 40 people per class, but we can run multiple classes at the same time. Uh, sometimes up to three classes, so we can get a lot of people through that facility. But we try to keep it small, so that we can uh, make sure that we're getting, you know, the most effective training possible and getting our people really prepared. So I know one of the bigger events that both you and I have attended there um, for with um, Firefighter One was putting it all together. Right. And uh, that's a big day, and I know that we watch them, and you know, it isn't as I guess that nervous feeling because it is a training center. They're not, it's not live where they're rushing out of their house to go there. Um, but what is that putting it all together about? Well, it's one thing to hear about it, or just like, you know, but when you and I are there along with the sheriff right. and others, it's amazing to see all of, you know, all of the uh, training and education now put to use in the burn house uh, on the, you know, using the equipment um, and, and seeing those firefighters putting all their training in action on that site and wearing, you know, sometimes we're there and it's a hot day and they're wearing, you know, tens, you know, dozens of pounds of equipment and it's something to say, it really is. And, and you yeah. feel confident knowing that our firefighters are trained well. You know, you and that. I've always said, I've, I've literally always said that, well, you know, everybody takes it for granted. When that whistle goes off at night and they are just literally, um, we're all in bed sleeping and these people get out and they go to, and they go fight these fires and they keep us safe. Um, I think it's somewhat taken granted for, Absolutely. and we, all of the commissioners, along with our sheriff and all our constitutional officers are so supportive of our public safety and our law enforcement. But I, I will tell you that there's a, there's a cost there. Right. And the one thing that um, you coming from a municipality, me coming from a municipality, um, realize is that we have to fund. This is an essential part. And you as being liaison 
to that department. Um, you know, actually, the ins and outs of how that works. You know, so how do we do that? How do we make sure we give the resources and the financial stability to those right. to the fire academy? It's, it's a great question. Well, you know, as you said, we we have we share a, a real respect for for first responders and for the fire service. Um, you know, they you, you can't say enough about their dedication to public service, their commitment to protecting the public health, safety, and welfare. And all the many ways that our first responders have contributed to the quality of life in our county, it's, it's, it's tremendous. It's, you know, countless ways that they've, that they've elevated the quality of life. And, you know, monmouth has got a, a long history of supporting firefighters. We've got not only the statewide Firemen's Association headquartered right here in Monmouth, we've also got the State Firemen's uh, Museum headquartered. Exactly. So we need to provide them the resources. We need to continue to show them that, uh, you know, that, that, that the work they do is, is meaningful and, and needs to continue to be funded. And we do it through our annual budget process, and it's something you know, I, I know it's near and dear to your heart, but that process is arduous. We start it, the minute we close the books on our previous fiscal year budget, we're starting on our new budget, and that's well, how Well, that's to important it. to say because um, we're running now um, here towards the end of the summer, and we're about to embark on that um, very time-consuming process of putting the budget together. And people say, why is it? It's because when we, introduce that budget, we want the people in Monmouth County to know that we've given it everything, everything to the taxpayers to give financial stability, cost savings, and more importantly, the quality of life. And so how does that, how does it work, the process, and how much? Yeah, it's, well, one of the most important things we must do, our obligation is to respect the taxpayer. Um, job number one is to not take into the public treasury more than you're spending. It sounds simple, but unfortunately, not many levels of government do it. We do it but not all other levels of government do that. You should only be taking into your public coffers what you need to fund the government. Uh, so, what you, so what you do, right, is, is you, you meet with all your department heads, you make sure that you know bare minimum what you need to continue to deliver essential services to protect public health, safety, and welfare, uh, to make investments in infrastructure, which we both know are very, very important. Um, and then when you, when you have your, your uh, required, you know, what your priori priorities are, then you seek you know, measures to fund them. And I know in, in the county, as you know, we've actually cut the tax rate over the last exactly. few years. And, and that's uh, huge. It's huge. And we've been good stewards of the tax taxpayer. Well, thank you. And I, I thank you for all this information here. You know, it's a long process. We have so many departments here in Monmouth County. Um, and, and you chair and as the liaison um, to two of the most vital law and public, or public safety and more importantly, the financial side of it. So I want to thank you, Commissioner uh, Nick DiRocco. And uh, looking forward to continuing this great work that we do as a true team thank there. You. That's all we have for this segment on Mammoth in Focus. Looking forward to seeing you the next time. Filmmakers from around the world submit their work to the Garden State Film Festival. Discover the next stars of the silver screen in Asbury Park, New Jersey. GSFF only happens once a year, so purchase your tickets today. For more information, visit www.gsff.org. Visit GSFF. Welcome to Brookdale Community College, located on 222 acres in beautiful Lincroft, New Jersey, just two miles from Garden State Parkway, exit 109. Founded in 1967, Brookdale is the County College of Monmouth County, offering associate degrees in 75 academic programs, as well as numerous academic credit certificates and certificates of achievement. In Monmouth County, New Jersey, every beach is different. Discover yours at tourism.visitmonmouth.com. Welcome to Monmouth in Focus, a program about the services and functions of Monmouth County government. I'm County Commissioner Director Tom Arnone, your host for this segment of Monmouth in Focus. Today I am joined on this beautiful scenery, beautiful Jersey Shore, Monmouth County, here with Tim McClune of, and obviously everybody knows Tim McClune. Um, I'm, not sure I'm, got, I'm not sure I'm enhancing the beautiful scenery. <laughs> you are so much. You, <laughs> you, and, and let me tell you something, over the course of the years, you have enhanced not just Long Branch, but many other beaches. Um, 
So Tim, everybody knows McClunes um, because it's not just here in Long Branch. So you opened your first um, restaurant, McClunes Rum Runner, in Seabright in 1987. Um, how was that? What like, was that I opening? thinking? Yeah, and, and from there, everything just snowballed. Yeah, the short story is just I, you know, I'm a musician, and I was traveling around, and I played a private party there, and I asked the owner if he wanted to sell it. And I, I, w I was making like $300 a week. You know, I'm asking a guy if he wants to sell it. And a couple of years later, he got in touch and he said, if you give me a million dollars by New Year's Eve, with, this was 86 into 87 when the tax law changed on capital gains. It was going to double or triple. So everybody was selling whatever they could before it's December 31st. It's an unbelievable story. So he says, if you give me a million dollars by December 31st, it's yours. I could have sworn he said, if you give me a bazillion dollars. <laughs> That so I got, I got relatives and friends to chip in. We did a second mortgage on our house, so we opened it up. And of course, it was right when the stock market crashed. I missed the summer, and we opened up in October, and the stock market crashes. So but, it's like, this is going to be a long haul. Something happened positive because you have opened up um, numerous restaurants here in Monmouth County. And, um, and I know that, um, you know, I, I guess it's a signature. Um, because wherever beach you're at and you say, um, what restaurant, it's like the beach, McClune's goes with the beach, um, Asbury. And you better, and, you better say Robinson's. And, that, I know. That's Robinson's, my wife's name. And so I was like, just going to, so it's so funny you brought that up because so many people say, so why is Robinson's, um, McClune's tied to McClune's too? I never knew that until you just said that. Oh, really? So, well, you know Frank Robinson. Yes, I do. That's my brother-in-law. Oh, so okay. So my okay. wife is 10th of 11 Robinson people. And I, quite honestly, I thought people were going to get sick of hearing my name. And maybe they have. No, they uh, haven't. Well, I don't know. No, so I figured, let's do that. You know, put a different name on it. And it hit right away for whatever. We were trying to do a, uh, like a comfort food upscale pub. Keep it reasonably priced and all that, but give them that. And so Robinson Ale House, you know, it's actually our most consistent. It's our best producer by the square foot. People love it. You know, yeah, I, it's, I tell you, I, I'm there because I live close to that part of the county. So I'm, I'm there quite often. Um, and, you know, the good thing about and I, and I want to commend you and more, more importantly, thank you on and forget about the government side and all that side there personally, because you're very successful. And you've been very successful. Do you want to talk to my you, banker? Yeah. <laughs> he may have a different take on this. But the other three things that are passionate to you, and I, I want to touch a little bit on, first and foremost, um, how they express. Right. And that is first and foremost. And you know, I've said it's probably the only purely good thing we've all ever done. There's always an agenda with something, absolutely. you know, whatever you're doing. This was just from the heart. And uh, this will be our 29th year. We got interrupted. We didn't really do anything in 2020 except we made a video and we sent it to the places we normally go to. But this year, most of them are saying they want us back and we can do it in person. So we'll see that in, in 19, we did 100 shows. We start in the very beginning of November and we go to Christmas Eve. You're a great musician. Oh. I, I come down here Boy, and watch you, you are down a good here. schmoozer. I know. Well, you know what? Listen, it's easy because everybody is agreeing. Here. Uh. But you know what's 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 great about it and, and and i've so much what you just said is so important because i am i am very involved in two separate things i held a, a very big i have a foundation for pancreatic cancer Oof. that i have a big run for in september and um and i tout it all the time we do really well um and all the money goes to the lust garden foundation and then i've embarked on a special needs school um here that i'm opening up really? um, in wall township and it's for aged out students and what you just said the work so you rush through that i'm going to interview you yes when you I say know. aged out students people don't necessarily know what you mean and we see all these young people we, do. we mostly play to adults but we do play at schools and when they hit 21 it, the light switch goes out. off they're out of wherever they've been and in some case they've been there since they were four years old yeah. And so where are they going? So that's what you're doing. I'm doing I'm building it. So I have a, you know, it's called the Achieve Academy. It's in Wall Township. Um, it's not open. And my doors should open hopefully September of 24. And all this government stuff and all that stuff will go away. But that will be there forever. Well, my guest is Tom Arnone. And we'll be back in just a few minutes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. But um, so let me ask you, how um, it, it actually comes together now when you talk about the um, the the band and playing and how you purchased your first um, restaurant there because so but it's unique and it just shows people that you can do it and um, it was all connected you know and 
people make a big fuss over that I do a lot of different things. I tell the people that work for me, don't ever complain about getting fired because I've been fired more than all of you put together. <laughs> if you're a musician, you've been fired, you know. But everything kind of matched up, you know, I, and I was very fortunate that I got a lot of good opportunities to do things. I do want to go back to Holiday Express for a second, though, because for people that don't know what we do, and we were just talking about it at our meeting the other night, that it's hard to explain in a way. But it we is. have 125 professional musicians. They have to have sung, sung for their supper at some time in their life. So they're all good. And we have about 1,500 volunteers, and we go to these 100 places. But the goal with the places, there's two ways you get us to come. One is if we're not there, you get little or nothing at holiday time, nothing. So it's homeless shelters, soup kitchens, AIDS hospices, Great. long-term residential psychiatric facilities where people get no visitors. And the other way you get us is the need is so great, we don't care how much attention you're getting. And that's mostly for the younger people, a lot of cerebral palsy people and stuff. And, you know, uh, overall, the, I mean, in the beginning, we got a lot of credit. And As you it, should. It, it was a nice thing. We were doing a nice thing, but I didn't get it really that the generosity of the places we were going, letting us in to their world, you know, to the people that everybody averts their eyes, you know, or they don't want to, they feel weird, they stare at them, they do whatever. And that's our people. Yeah, you said. Yeah. That's people. That's and our peeps. <laughs> that's our peeps. And you're so right. And, you know, and that's the biggest thing that people forget. There's so many people that are being missed out there that yeah. need help. And you have done a great job. And because of that, you've been in you know, elected into New Jersey Hall of Fame. How weird is that? It's great. And it's so they, well they deserved. They called me up. They called me up and I was at a track meet coaching. And and the voice on the other end says, you've just been elected to the New Jersey Hall of Fame. I'm like, who is this? Did I go to college with you? <laughs> well, I, Are listen, you killing me? so well deserved. All of this, I want to thank you on behalf of Monmouth County, not just government, but all the residents, the 630,000 people here in Monmouth County, because you truly are a statesman for doing the right thing. And I want to thank you for joining me on this segment here. And I'm um, looking forward to maybe I'll run into you in one of the restaurants. I'm hoping so. I still have one uh, in college. And you so I, I need all the help I can You got get. it. Well, I want to thank you. <laughs> and thank I want to thank you for this segment and this episode of Monmouth in Focus. Looking forward to the next time. Have That's a great good. day. Thank you.